boys in the building. What's up, the dope boys? What's up, the dope boys? What's up, the dope boys in the building? Yeah, what's up, the dope boys? What's up, the dope boys? What's up, the dope boys in the building? Yeah, what's up, the dope boys? What's up, the dope boys? What's up, the dope boys in the building? What's up, the dope boys? What's up, the dope boys? Hi everyone, how's it going? Um, I'm going to bring you to the Calvin Klein house today, and I'm going to review my favorite offering by Calvin Klein. I have used quite a few fragrances by Calvin Klein uh, from middle school up till now. Uh, you know, I've used Eternity for Men, CK1, CK into You, Escape, um, quite a few different ones. I'm sure I've used more than just that, but those are just a few to mention. And this is my favorite um, by far. Um, I actually really enjoy CK1 as well. I still wear that every once in a while, but this one is my favorite. And it was introduced in 2008, and that is uh, Calvin Klein Euphoria Intense or Intense Euphoria, whatever way you want to say it. It says Intense Euphoria on the bottle. Um, this is the 3.4 ounce. You can get the 1.7 or the 3.4 ounce anywhere between $30 and $70 American. Something to mention is you're going to pay a lot more for this at, like, say, Sephora or Macy's um, in the store or online than you will at places like Perfume Mania or Fragrance Net. Um, this this 3.4 ounce bottle is like 65 bucks plus tax at Sephora, and I got it for like mm, 35 or 40 on Fragrance Net. So that's something to mention. You can get this for much cheaper. So maybe like what I do is I'll go check out the fragrance in. Uh, the store, spray it on my skin, walk around, you know, do whatever. And then if I really enjoy it, then I'll buy it later on that night or at the end of the week or something like that from FragranceNet um, where I can get it for much cheaper. Um, also, this is the box. Just following the same theme with the color and everything as the bottle. Um, I just thought I'd show the box. It's nothing special. I just kept it for the review. Now, the bottle itself is pretty cool. Um, except for this metal around the glass is not all that sturdy, but it is not all the way around the bottle either. It ends right here, and then it goes back to glass. Cap is metal with plastic on the inside. It's pretty heavy, and the sprayer works pretty well. It's a sprayer, and uh, it doesn't shoot out a whole lot at once, but, you know. Uh, one side note, I would say that if you do not like sweet fragrances, if you do not have a sweet tooth, if you do not like candy-like fragrances, you're going to hate this. Uh, one word to, to really describe this, at least the opening and the mid, is pretty much like sweet candy-like. So if you don't want to smell like candy or super sweet, uh, I would steer clear from this because it is a, uh, a sweet bomb. So anyways, the fragrance notes in this, fra in this uh, fragrance are vetiver, amber, myrrh, labdanum, uh, oud, and then we got like some ginger pepper at the opening, supposedly. I personally don't really smell uh, too much ginger or too much pepper. It's not like in your face. It's more subdued, I would say. Um, <clears throat> black basil, cedar leaf. And towards the base, yeah, patchouli, and apparently at the at the top, there's also like a raindrop accord. Now I don't know what the deal is with all that, but it doesn't smell too watery to me. If it's if that's what raindrop accord is supposed to smell like is watery, it's not doing it for me. Um, what this really is going to smell like is a really thick, sweet, candy-like fragrance. There's there's no citrus in the note breakdown, but it's citrusy and sweet. It really does remind me of like taking a candy and putting it in liquid form. Um, Brandon, Cutlass Supreme SL, did mention that it reminds him of Jolly Ranchers. I could see that. Um, for me, it's more along the line of, like, if you took Smarties and made it, like, a liquidy type thick smell. That's what I get out of it for the first couple hours. After that, it goes into the mid, and, and it starts to get a little bit of an oud quality to it, actually. Um, now, the oud isn't amped up. It's actually a very crowd-pleasing type oud. It's not pungent or in your face. It's not medicinal, and it's not like a rotten oud. Um, well, that's what oud is, is like rotten wood or whatever. 
and it doesn't have that type of smell. It's just really super duper woody, mixed with the amber, and it starts to become very masculine. Um, and the cedar leaf too really part, starts to play a part in this. Now, what helps make this really sweet is the labdanum. Uh, to me, labdanum is kind of like a powdery, almost somewhat chocolatey type sweet smell. Uh, no, this does not smell chocolatey at all. It's a sweet kind of gourmand, woody oriental, woody, whatever you want to call it. Um, but it is not chocolatey. Chocolatey. It's not like vanilla-ish. It's more just really sweet candy type of smell. And that's basically what I get out of it. And then when it gets to the dry down, it's basically just like vetiver and woody notes. And it's kind of lost the super duper sweetness to it. Uh, like no more citrusy type aspect to it. Uh, just kind of a somewhat sweet woody um, vetiver type smell. Now versatility with this one. Personally, I use this for two things. Uh, one, the club. Now, my man Leo Zito did recommend this fragrance to me, so I will mention that. And I got to say, he knows what he's talking about with this one. You will get compliments from girls, if you're my age, from this fragrance. Um, if you're, you know, uh, 15 to 25, I'd say pull this off. Uh, after that, it's kind of playful. It's a little almost, I don't want to say childish, but it is really super duper sweet. And there are much better things to uh, choose than this once you get past like 25. Now, like I said, for me, I just kind of use this for the club. And basically anything casual. Um, you're just wearing jeans and a t-shirt and you want to pull this off, sure. Yeah, it's going to get you compliments if you're just going out to dinner or to the mall or something like that with your buddies. I would never use this for a date. And I probably wouldn't use this at the bar either, to be honest with you. Um, it's more just like club and casual. CC, club and casual. Um, and as far as what time of year to pull it out, no, no for spring. Um, for spring, I do like using a little bit leafier, uh, greener type fragrances. And this is none of those, uh, you know, none of the options there. Um, and I did use this a few times during the summer, but I really did kind of tuck it away until uh, last month is when I really started to use it at the beginning of the month. So I'd say from fall till spring would be the best time to pull this out. Although I will say the projection is not that great. Unfortunately, it's got a very heavy, thick uh, type smell to it, but it does not last very long. Um, if I do like two sprays, it's gone within five or six hours. I do spray this on my shirt. So what I'll do is one spray to the neck, on the front of the neck, one on the back of the neck, one on each wrist and one on my shirt. So I do use five sprays with this one. Um, but watch out for the first like two hours. It's going to be really kind of heavy, almost sickly sweet. Um, if it starts to make you feel uh, just drowned out by the fragrance, by the smell, I would say cut back a couple sprays and see how that works for you, maybe three. So I do between three and five sprays. I know that a few other people mentioned that they do more just because they feel like it does not last long. But if I spray this on my shirt and my neck, I do notice it, and it sticks around for a little while. Um, now, what I what I would say for um, the longevity, like I said, I get like six six hours if I don't spray that much. But if I do spray it on my shirt, I notice it for about 10 hours or so. And the complement factor with this stuff, like I said, uh, it will get you noticed. Girls do like this scent quite a bit. It's very sweet, somewhat seductive. Now, for being a Calvin Klein fragrance, I do give these guys props. It is um, synthetic, yes. But it is a little bit different in comparison to a lot of other uh designer fragrances they did kind of go out on a ledge a little bit here with this one because it is so sweet um, a lot of uh, designer houses don't really want to take that that plunge they kind of stick to like um, like the crisp clean type scents and this one you know it just kind of took a die I'm really impressed with Calvin Klein for this one actually I they haven't actually really made anything since then it's been any anything you know worth purchasing but um, so this is actually the last fragrance that came out by them that I really do enjoy. Um, so I give them props for that. And as far as uh, compliments from the ladies, like I said, 
I use this at the club. The reason why is because you're going to get drowned in compliments. I promise you that. Um, I, I think that you're almost, if as long as you play your cards right and uh, you turn on the charm a little bit, you're almost guaranteed to bring someone home. Um, this stuff is, it's good. Um, ask Leo. If you don't believe me, ask Leo. He will tell you, yeah, down there in Brazil, he's bringing home ladies with this thing. Um, so overall, I do give the fragrance an 8 out of 10. I think it is a very good smell, but it's nothing super duper out there that's amazing. But it does it for me. I love sweet fragrances. Um, it just doesn't project as, as great as I would hope it to uh, for being such a thick, heavy, sweet fragrance. And it doesn't last as long as I would hope it to for the type of fragrance it is. But other than that, the presentation is kind of cool with the metal around it. And the spray works well, and the scent is good, and I get compliments. So I do give it an 8 out of 10. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you got any questions, comment below. I'll get to them as soon as possible. All right, guys.